Hi everyone, this is uh, Peter Christoph from Barack. Welcome to the uh, Barack 2020 Partner Kickoff Meeting. I'm glad so many of you could attend today. Um, although Barack has a unique technology, uh, partners are, are very, very key to our growth and success. And without partners, we couldn't achieve the objectives we set for the company over the coming years. Um, as, a, as a supplier of technology, we want to provide the best possible training and support to partners. And we're going to be looking at some of the ways we can do that today, but would welcome feedback from yourselves on how we can best support you in your own region, because obviously each region has different requirements in terms of sales support, marketing and training, POCs and so on. So please feedback to us how we can best help you to be successful in your own region. Um, a little housekeeping first, because there's so many people on the uh, meeting, on the webinar, we're going to, we're well, all muted, so you can probably see that. Um, if you have any questions, please use chat and then we'll uh, come to um, answer those at the end of the uh, presentations. Um, also, we're happy to schedule individual technical sessions, training discussions, go to market strategy discussions in the coming weeks. Again, if you contact me, uh, we can schedule those and do those uh, for your individual companies and focus on your areas of, uh, of interest. Um, our presenters today are Sylvester de Costa, who's our technical pre-sales manager, and uh, we also have Ryan Calise, who's our EMEA Business Development Manager, who's going to be um, also provide some of the presentations. Now, our CEO has been held up, so I think we'll kick off without, without him. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, he's there. <laughs> Omar, my apologies. No my apologies for being late. <laughs> I'll pass over to Omar. Omar's our um, CEO and co-founder. is going to welcome you all and kick off the, uh, the webinar. Thanks, Omar, over to you. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you very much for everyone for attending. Uh, my name is Omar. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Barack. Um, as Peter mentioned, welcome to this uh, webinar. It's uh, as our uh, as our as as we grow uh, at Barack and as we open to the world, uh, a lot of our strategy is now based on uh, partners, and we're looking at partners to grow what we're doing. We have a unique technology. We want to uh, we want to grow our technology worldwide, and we believe and we understand that using partners is the best way to be able to uh, to achieve our aim. So uh, we're looking. At at very specific partners, partners with the skill set to uh, complement what we do. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, 2019 was a great year. We are now uh, in four locations worldwide, in London, Paris, Boston, and Tunis, uh, after two years from starting the company. Um, and we're growing, we're growing fast. So uh, hopefully, uh, what we offer is unique you'll see it so hopefully we'll have you all on board so we can so we can do great things in uh, 2020 thank you very much for attending and looking forward to speaking to each uh, to each of you uh, in the near future thank you thanks omar so we're now going to kick off the presentations and i'll pass over to our first speaker who's going to be i think uh, ryan or sylvester i'm not sure Uh, it will be Ryan and Sylvester, but uh, Ryan will kick off, uh, and then uh, we'll uh, take it from there. But Ryan is still on mute. There we go. I'm here. I'm on mute now. <laughs> Hello, guys. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Sylvester. Thank you, Omar and, uh, and Peter. Um, so we're just going to take you through a, a recap or a, a quick overview about us uh, and just a recap on the technology as well for some of you that aren't quite as knowledgeable as others. Um, and we'll have some Q&As at the end of it as well. So just who are Barak? Who are we and where have we come from, essentially? So we were established back in 2017, as Omar mentioned, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, business partners Omar and Mardi set it up together with the view to tackle the encrypted uh, issue, if you like, the, uh, the problems with the encrypted traffic that comes in and out of our networks. Um, so we actually joined the Barclays Techstars Accelerator Program. So I'm not sure if you guys have heard of it or come across it, but essentially it's a program for new technology startups, new businesses to gain access to entrepreneurial guidance and mentoring and access to uh, networking events. Uh, and Barclays hosted their own networking events with the, within the financial sector. It's off the back of that, that Barclays uh, outside of the program took a look at our uh, solution and what we provide, uh, the return on investment for it. And actually, after testing themselves, they bought our technology for their own infrastructure. So actually became one of our first customers, certainly one of our big, uh, one of our big headline customers as well. 
and they are still a customer of ours today. And since uh, we were launched, we've also been invited to the uh, Cybersecurity Accelerator Programme hosted by the National Cybersecurity Centre in the UK. Uh, and that is a, an elite group of vendors of solutions uh, uh, selected from competition based, um, uh, from a competition based earlier. It's to do with, uh, it's to do with um, the technology that is designed to have a return on investment to be uh, contributing to the UK's cybersecurity defences and offer a value for money as well. So it's an elite programme for everybody. And as Omar mentioned, we have worldwide uh, coverage in both sales and technical with bases in London, Poston, Paris and Tunis. So as, uh, as a vendor, you will have localised support and, uh, and expertise on hand as well. So what exactly do we do? So we provide, as you know, encrypted traffic visibility. So we accurately and rapidly, rapidly detect malicious malware or any suspicious behavior that is hidden within encrypted network traffic, and that's inbound and outbound through your traffic flow. But the unique selling point or the key message for us is that we do this without decrypting or breaking any encrypted traffic whatsoever. And it actually makes us the only network agnostic vendor that uses this methodology. And Sylvester will take us through a bit as to how that works a bit later on for us. And off the back of what we do and the continuous improvement and continuous machine learning that we, we've put into and the algorithms that we put into it as well, we're getting recognized. There are a number of uh, bodies that are recognizing our work, whether it be anything from security company, a newcomer of the year, best emerging technology, but we're getting a lot of mentions about our artificial intelligence and machine learning or the, the best use of machine learning as well. So there's a lot of things going on and we're still being nominated for various awards as we speak today. So what is the cyber issue? Well, as we're all aware, encryption is a bit of a problem at the moment. Yes, it's been designed to uh, protect information um, and uh, secure the connection between one point and another. Uh, but as ever in the cybersecurity world, we, the good guys take one step forward and then the bad guys take the step to, to match us. And they are actually now utilizing encryption to mask their uh, malicious activity and malicious malware. And that's the problem. And a lot of people are now coming to the realization that having to inspect encrypted traffic is now a necessity uh, because there's a lot of, uh, in fact, it's about six of uh, encrypted traffic has had some form of malicious attack hidden within it. And as we've now hit into 2020, we're now looking at a worldwide internet traffic, generally speaking, of around 80% encrypted. So it is an issue and it is on everybody's lips at the moment. Um, so much so that it's actually progressed from the, the, you know, the procurement and the IT managers and the cybersecurity team. It's now reaching sea level as to the importance of inspecting encrypted traffic. And there's a recent survey, as you can see here, as you can see that by the numbers, a lot of CIOs are agreeing with the statements. They believe security defenses are less effective because they can't inspect encrypted network traffic. Uh, so a lot of them expect to suffer an attack which has uh, utilized encryption in the first place. And then CIOs also agree that their strategy to keep improving their infrastructure internally may well be put at jeopardy purely because of the, uh, in, uh, the vulnerabilities that are introduced behind the scenes as well. So as I say, it's on everybody's lips at the moment. And the driving forces, well, as we're all aware, to make sure that we are in, we are securing our customers' details and our own details as well. So the likes of GDPR, Cyber Essentials, uh, the uh, governing bodies behind that to get yourselves accredited to be be cyber secure and cyber aware. And then there's other, other services and applications such as G Suite, Office 365, and we're even moving into social media as well with Facebook, Twitter, utilizing encryption. And uh, it's an important task and every single one of us, whether that be as a, on an individual personal basis or during our business hours, we all come across encrypted traffic in some way or form. And so, uh, yes, yeah. can you take us through how they work and, and how they don't work and more to so to speak? Of course, yeah, not, not a problem at all. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, I will uh, keep this short and, and brief because most of you already seen this presentation, probably even multiple times, but I'll uh, 
for the people who haven't done it uh, yet, I will try to keep it uh, um, simple and good. Uh, if you do want to go more in depth, if you do want to see this uh, either yourself again or with your customers, we're more than happy to, of course, uh, go over this with you guys, with your customers and go even more in depth and make sure that the, the people who need to know uh, get the right information to it. So as we talk about that, uh, the, the three biggest methods that we are seeing right now on looking at the encrypted traffic and making sure that uh, the traffic that is going in and out of your network is indeed legit. And there are three different methods on that and that is packet decryption, uh, fingerprinting and what we do of course with Barack is metadata. Now if we're looking at uh, the packet decryption, uh, a lot of people uh, are doing this. We've got one really big customer who was looking at just packet decryption. They want to do packet decryption and upgrading their environment will cost them over $110 million, which is a lot of money. But that is based because it's new hardware. Uh, it is based on uh, actually rolling it out so it, it's it's learning people new skills it's the time that it takes to actually roll it out so there's a lot of things you have to think about if you're using the packet decryption uh, and even that isn't the silver bullet the, the silver bullet is not there yet because now with tls 1.3 which ryan already mentioned a little bit uh, it doesn't always work because tls 1.3 don't want to be uh, doesn't want to be uh, decrypted so on the other hand, we've got fingerprinting that can help as well. A lot of uh, vendors, uh, hardware vendors are starting to roll out the JA3 suite um, part of their environment. They might not call it that way, but it's based on the JA3, JA3S environment. And what that does is very quickly look at the, the network packet. It takes five, uh, five different metrics on this. And from those metrics, we create a hash. Uh, and that has is just like antivirus, anti-malware. Uh, there is good, there's bad, and there's unknowns. Uh, and the good and the bad, we know what to do with, but it's the unknowns which are very big, of course. Now, it, uh, if, if they are changing, so if anything in the good changes, then all of a sudden that also becomes an unknown again. So it constantly keeps changing. So it's a very reactive uh, technology is never going to be proactive uh, and you can tamper with it as well there's a good uh, blog from akamai if you like to read it uh, and that uh, you can read it there barack uses metadata we don't have these issues none of those issues either with packet decryption or with fingerprinting we actually can use part of the fingerprinting to make our product better tls 1.3 is a challenge so if you're looking at the uh, decryption technology and uh, earlier on we already uh, done a presentation uh, regarding uh, for instance the NSA who says that the whole packet decryption doesn't work anymore and this is one of the reasons why TLS 1.3 it's available a lot of people start to use it because the good thing about it is it can't be broken if there is a break and inspect in it uh, then then it will see that as a, an attack and it will drop the uh, it will drop the, the, the stream, so it's not really worth even breaking and inspecting it because it won't be seen anymore. Facebook is even adopting Facebook 1.3, but it's in quotes because they've got their own master cipher, as it were, so it's not as secure as that it should be. But uh, there's a lot of people doing uh, TLS 1.3. Metadata. What we use doesn't have these problems. We can actually see on the handshake, we can already see that steel as 1.3, uh, and we can actually see where it's coming from, where it's going to. So we see a lot, lot of extra things inside the metadata itself to make that 1.3 TLS, um, make sure that that also is correct and not uh, malicious. Now, we're not the only ones using metadata. It's, it's governments, it's everybody's already, you know, it's a lot of bigger companies are already using metadata, but not in the way that we do it. There is too much data to, in, de, to decrypt. Governments are using just little tiny bits like the who, the where, and the when, how frequent. Uh, they are using that sort of thing. Uh, Facebook, um, 
uh, Netflix, they're using separate bits of data. They can look at what films you're watching so they can recommend better. Amazon is using it so they can target you with better advertisements. We are using it so you have a safe environment and a safe uh, network traffic env environment. Now, very quickly, how do we do it? It is quite a, a simple uh, solution. In the back end, of course, there's a whole lot of AI and a whole lot of calculating going on. We're, we're talking petabytes of data at the moment, which we uh, analyzed. Uh, but at the front end, we've got a simple solution, which is called the collector. The collector will sit at the edge of your, of your, of your network and will monitor via span, a tap, mirror port. And what we'll do, we collect the metadata. We drop everything else. So we drop the payload. We don't look at it. We don't have to decrypt anything there. We'll drop it. And we only look at the metadata. And that's what we gather. Then we'll send it through to the EDV platform. The EDV platform can be uh, in our cloud, uh, and that's uh, at the moment the most used common way to send it, but it could also be on-premise. So if you have, uh, this morning we had a big uh, company which we wanted to talk, which wants to talk to us, they only want everything on-premise because it needs to be secure. And that's also possible, and that's a big benefit, of course. Now, the way that it's actually done, when we receive the data from the collector, we rebuild the session. And with that rebuild session, we can then look at our intelligence. And the intelligence is, is, is based on three different methods. The first method is all the known behaviors we already seen, which we built the product on. Uh, and behaviors is really what we know. So if there is a new threat out there, if there's a new phishing, or if there is a new uh, uh, malicious uh, 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 fires out there, then what we can do, we know the behavior of it. We don't have to know that this is a zero day, this is a threat which has never been seen before. We don't have to update the databases. We know the behavior of, for instance, the command and control. So if there is a completely new one, we'll see the same behavior as we have seen before. And 99 out of 100, that is more than enough to see that's actually going on. So that's all the known behaviors. It's also the timings. It's also how quickly does it come back? Is this a robot? Is this um, a, a person filling in a form? All that sort of thing we can see and we can pick up by the norm. Then we got the second part. The second part is we sit on your network or on your customer's network and we'll learn from the, uh, the, the network that we sit on. And that means that day-to-day uh, -day work is uh, this behavior, and we'll see that behavior week in, week out. And after a couple of weeks, we, uh, we detect all of a sudden that one machine is doing something out of the ordinary. Uh, instead of uh, sending traffic uh, nine to five, it starts sending traffic at midnight. Uh, that's, of course, for us a very uh, big suspicion, so we'll just check that. This is a very, very simple uh, example. There's mo loads more that we do. And the last one is you can also alter it slightly yourself. So if you have developers, if you have people there who uh, who do stuff on the network which they are not supposed to or developing on, then we can market either good or bad, and that's the third part. Altogether, that will uh, be created into an attack profile. We'll analyze, analyze that profile and create a risk score. And the risk score is between zero and one, where one is stop, burn the building, this is really bad. And zero is uh, nothing to worry about this. We've seen a hundred thousand times. And then we'll then go towards your actions, towards what is actually uh, happening in your company. And that could be um, the SOC or the SIEM who's actually taking action on it, or it could be a firewall which uh, then closes a port or closes a, uh, a URL or an IP address. Or you can just look at the web interface a uh, new web interface, which we're going to talk about later as well. And then you can lo look at it and take some action yourself from there as well. So that's very quickly how the Barack solution works and sits together. Now, this is uh, a new slide, and it's just for the, for the MSPs out there, the people who have multiple tenants, multiple customers. Uh, we can be uh, for bigger customers as well. So we can have multi-sites. Uh, multiple collectors around the world uh, going to one EDV platform, 
or you can have multiple customers on multiple segments and in the world everywhere going into the EDV platform and you as a customer can then lo log in as the MSP you can log in and you can choose which customer you want to see and you have an overview on what actually happens on the both of them if you have a bigger customer with multiple collectors they all got the same collector id so it will still go into the same customer and you still have all the data for that one customer in one web interface so that's how it works with multi-site and multi-tenancy very simple solution looks simple should be simple so there you go now how does it all work together uh, we correlate all the data that we gather from the metrics, from the multiple collectors, from everywhere, from all the metadata that we uh, gather over the network. And over 200 metrics are correlated at the moment. And we check that, we make sure that it all works together. Uh, we, uh, we, we check whether the timings are correct, we check and we compare it with what we already know, and then we can give it a risk score and that's how we do it. It's the correlation of all the data, the timings, the, the, the to, the from, IP addresses, the URLs, everything together we can correlate the data. Now, the results are still very, very good. So uh, very quickly going over the proven results. Uh, hopefully most of you already seen this and heard how we've actually dealt with this because the first time I saw this, I was like, really, it can't be, it's so good. But we had customers um, who gave us this data. There were a couple of universities, a couple of companies, uh, real life companies. And because we gather metadata, there was no, uh, individual data for customers there. So it, it isn't signed with uh, a specific customer name and that sort of thing. So they were happy to give that to us. It was 400 terabytes of data. We checked it over very, very quickly. Then we gave that same data to analytics people, uh, two or three uh, companies. They checked it as well and they came up with this result. So we were very pleased to see that we're very accurate in detecting very few false uh, positives. And looking at the reduction time, yes, uh, reduction time is done on the other company out there who does metadata analysis, which is Cisco. Uh, but Cisco has got a couple of issues. First of all, you need to have everything Cisco and everybody knows how expensive Cisco can be. Uh, and then also, if you want it on premise, it can't be done. They only do it with, an, uh, with a, a cloud-based solution where we can of course also be on premise. Uh, and the other thing is uh, the reaction time. So how quickly do they actually come back? Between 10 minutes? and maybe sometimes two hours before they have a result on, on the traffic, that's not real time, that is too late. Because if it's two hours later, your database, which have been hacked, is all over the internet and you, you, you don't have any grips on it anymore. So Cisco, yes, uh, that's the only one who does the other uh, metadata, but we believe that we are a lot better than them. Then we already talked about the decryption technologies out there and why we think uh, we can do slightly better. And the same with the fingerprinting, because uh, fingerprinting is good, but you've got a lot of unknowns. It won't be in real time and it won't be uh, proactive like we can do. So what do we detect and where do we sit? If you look at uh, what we detect at the moment, the first one is DDoS. Now we had a couple of months ago, or a couple of weeks ago, just before Christmas, uh, Amazon uh, was being targeted by a couple of DDoS attacks, quite big. Uh, and that, uh, that was really annoying for them, of course. But a couple of our customers have our Barack solution out there, and we noticed that some of our customers were actually participating in the attack uh, to AWS. And they didn't realize that, of course they didn't, because you would not want to do that by yourself. So that means two things. First of all, their servers are participating in a DDoS attack, and that's something uh, as uh, an end user you don't want, of course. A second is somehow those machines got infected and got, uh, uh, has got some kind of malware uh, helping out in, in attacking it. So, well, we picked it up and we could help you identify and. Uh, those customers were very quickly to react and, uh, and clean up the, those machines. Uh, 
So yeah, the other way around, of course, works as well. So we pick up very quickly what's actually happening with the DDoS uh, coming in, and you can then take your own measures and changing the DNS and whatever you need to do to uh, prevent the DDoS attack. Men in the middle, uh, it's a story I tell all the time. Uh, there is a very malicious um, sort of ransomware, well, it's not even ransomware, it's a, it's a very malicious piece of malware. What it does, it uh, sends messages uh, that some people have been tagged on either Facebook or Twitter or what have you. And uh, people are curious, so they will click on it. They go to the Facebook page, but it's not Facebook, it's Fakebook. Now, normally what happens in this case, they put in the username and the password, and it stops there. It, it doesn't go any further. You try it again, and then you realize, oh shoot, I should have not done that because this is probably not right. And they start to look and they see fake book rather than Facebook. And, and that means that, uh, oh, I know I now have been compromised, so I'll change my password on Facebook. And then, yeah, things stop. This not, this is clever. This is very clever. What it does, it yet takes your username and password, passes it on to Facebook, scrapes the screen and passes it on to you. So you see via them uh, your own Facebook profile with everything normal. So you don't have uh, any idea that you're actually being compromised. And because uh, the, the naming and uh, the, the green lock is still in the top corner saying this is a safe site, you think nothing the matter. The moment you close your browser, uh, they realize you close the browser and they're sending tag requests out to all of your friends. They've got all of your feeds, all of your data, and you're, yeah, it just goes on and on from there. So with the phishing and the ransomware uh, is basically the first part of it as well. We are very clever because we got a unique DNS scoring algorithm. So if there is phishing emails, we picked it up very, very quickly. One of the methods that we're using, for instance, is um, the English uh, dictionary. So we've got the whole dictionary in our library uh, and, and, and we use that to check against the DNSs. So if there is a, uh, a word in there that is slightly misspelled, slightly different than it would be in the dictionary, that for us already raises suspicion. Uh, and that's just one of the things that we do with our unique uh, DNS scoring algorithms, as well as a couple of websites where we have uh, URLs that are already um, uh, blacklist and that sort of thing. We'll use those as well. So yeah, we got quite a unique solution there. Now here we go. We've been waiting for this. We have been uh, anticipating this for quite a while, but it's finally here. And I'm quite excited about this because this actually looks good and I really, really like this. So people who are uh, looking at Barack and have seen the old interface, the white background, uh, it was already looking good. It was a simple interface. You could see quite a few things. You can, you can start to already uh, help yourself with, for instance, certificates, uh, making sure that uh, no, uh, expired certificates are being used and there's a whole lot of things that we could do but we now decided to give it a face facelift uh, and of course what is very modern today is a dark interface so we have a nice dark interface you can change it by the way if you want in the settings you can make it back to white again but it, it is the new web interface and it looks a lot better than it did before and we've got a lot more information in here so this, for instance, is the front page when you log in. Uh, and if you already have a POC or if you have an environment already up and running, you can log into the same page and choose the new interface. So from now on, you can do that and you will be brought to this environment and you'll see uh, this web interface. Now on here, uh, you got the attacks over time. On the right hand side, you see the uh, amount of traffic. We can see the, uh, the uh, unique IP addresses. We can see the beaconing attacks. We can see the certification attacks. We can see where they're coming from on the globe. And we can see a little bit of the traffic flow and what kind of in the radar, we can see what kind of attacks they are. And on the green bits, it's clickable. So you can see, hey, I can see malware. Let's click on malware and it will bring you to the malware section. And you can investigate a little bit further there. Now the next example I'm going to give you is the cyber detection, which is quite important because now we can see the severities, different sort of severities, critical, medium, warnings, and low, uh, which, which is quite good. Uh, and we can also, if you look down on it, you have the date and you can select the time frame. Uh, 
and in the time frame you can then see what is actually going on and then select one uh, date for instance and you'll see all the attacks from that date and then you can uh, drill down and you see the uh, the type the, the start date the end date the type and also uh, the protocol and the IP destination if you click for instance on the IP destination it will go to that IP address and you can even go further on the right hand side at the bottom you'll see uh, and this will be improved even because we're constantly working on this of course you will see that uh, the clients can talk to multiple uh, endpoints or endpoints are talking to multiple clients and you will see the correlation of it so if all of a sudden one client is being targeted by a whole lot of other uh, endpoints then that that will be uh, very obvious and then you can see an analysis, a daily attempts kind of analysis, and uh, you can spot trends during the weekend. It is not that busy, but uh, during the week, and especially on Tuesday, three o'clock, we got a lot of events going. Now we also can look at the agent itself, and if you have multiple agents, uh, there will be multiple agents underneath here. That's for the MSP people, for instance. And you can see the amount of traffic, and you'll know whether they are actually up to date and when the last time uh, somebody has logged in or some of the collectors have been logged in. It's, it's a good way to see what's actually happening on the network. The beaconing, uh, again, uh, uh, another one which is uh, very important for us uh, because uh, it looks at what is actually going on and how many times uh, internal IP addresses are pinging outside, are, am I still alive? Uh, and it's giving uh, keep alive settings, it's beaconing out saying, yes, I'm still here. And this could be, for instance, the top one here is Microsoft. It could be uh, just Windows updates or that sort of thing. The reason why this uh, has been uh, a danger and we keep, we keep making this better and better of course uh, but we found that one of the certificates on the microsoft side was actually expired and that's why it became very high for us that's why it became dangerous um, yeah we tried to contact microsoft but it's really difficult to get in there but uh, that's one of the things that uh, we found with them um, and others of course if you have a malicious piece of malware already running in your uh, in your environment just sitting there dormant just pinging out now and again uh, a beacon yes i'm here we can spot that and we can do something with it uh, a new bit on the web interface is a search page so what we can do here we can take for instance i said earlier uh, you can click on that ip address you can you can that will bring you here and you can either search for that ip address or directly go into that IP address if you clicked on it. And uh, select the date, again, the time range if you want. At the bottom you'll then see uh, what is happening there, what port it is, the source port, the destination port. So you can do already a lot of investigations here. And on the left hand side, you can then also search for on that, in that time frame, on that IP address, did I see uh, malicious DNS attacks? Did I see uh, time to live for the certificates? Uh, what, what is the malicious DNSs? I can, I can filter a lot more from here. And this is actually pretty good. You can go pretty in, deep, in depth here and, uh, and, and figure out what's actually going on. Now the last one on the, inter uh, on the web interface is that we can also change little bits and pieces here. So we can say, okay, from 0 0.86 in this case to one is critical something is going on so i can change the minimum and the maximum scores to make it feel a little bit for yourself that you find this important or slightly less important so you can do that as well so that's it for the new web interface very excited i'm hoping that you guys can uh, have a look at it later on if you have any questions give us a shout uh, make sure to uh, include myself uh, on on uh, on the thread, and uh, um, I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Give you a bit more explanation, or give you um, uh, a full demonstration and uh, and a uh, presentation on this. Now the next bit is a proof of concept or a POC. So for the partners, if you guys want to. Uh, actually continue with us and if you have new customers if you have new relationships which want to go towards uh, a proof of concept uh, that is not a problem we're more than happy to help you there uh, and we can do that quite quickly and quite uh, quite uh, accurately so the rollout of an uh, of an uh, proof of concept can be quite quick NFRs 
uh, talk to Peter, talk to Ryan, uh, and we can discuss how we can set up an NFR uh, with you guys. Uh, this is, of course, not for resale. So that means that you can use Barack on your internal network for your own demo purposes and that sort of thing. We'll help you set that up inside your own internal network. We'll make sure that you're comfortable with how it all looks and feels, uh, and then you can show it to your customers. And that's something that we also believe that uh, that would help for you guys. How does it all fit together? POC architecture. So if we do a POC, then uh, what we normally do, we schedule a couple of things. So we send out uh, during a first uh, in interaction, we send out a prerequisites, a document, and it basically tells you what to do and, and what to expect and all that sort of thing. Then we do a, uh, a sizing uh, exercise how big is the environment that we're going to uh, be uh, scoping out. We do a very quick planning call, usually no longer than half an hour, just making sure that everything will be in place, that we can actually roll it out properly, that everybody knows where they stand, that sort of thing. And then we do uh, a timed proof of concept, and it usually is about 30 days for a POC. If it wants to be, if it needs to be longer for a number of reasons, uh, we have the flexibility to change that. So, but that needs some good reasons, of course, if uh, it's longer than 30 days. Now, how does it work from a collector point of view? Uh, usually we'll send out a virtual machine uh, and the customer need to have a spanner or a mirror port or tap port ready to go. Uh, it's uh, collect or each uh, POC will have a unique ID for the company. So if you have, uh, if you are uh, either an MSP or a reseller, it won't be on your ID, it will be on the customer's ID. The platform, uh, for speed, most of our uh, proof of concept are done in the cloud because uh, that is very quick for us to roll out. So the only thing we then have to do is uh, for uh, on the customer side to roll, of, roll out a VM uh, for the collector, change the collector ID, and that will then send everything through to our cloud instance. And that can be done. Sometimes we can do, do it within the hour. And that's usually quite quick and quite basic to do, but we can spot a whole lot from there already. If you have a more secure environment, uh, we can also do the ETV platform on site, but that will cost a lot more time and effort. Uh, and it will also uh, need a little bit more discussion there. So we, we want to do that. So visibility during the proof of concept will be via the web interface, which we just saw. And I now just realized that I need to change that image because that's the old image. Um, and um, we have incident reports, which is a really good way of sh showing what's actually happening. So normally, if you implement this and you connect it to the SOC, the seam or to the firewalls, that is the way you get all your information. During the proof of concept, uh, we will send uh, documentation out, incident reports, and in that incident report, it will state, this is what happened. This IP address tried to connect to uh, those internal addresses. It happened so many times. This is what we think uh, it is, and this is how you basically solve it, and here's some more information about this uh, malicious attack. So that's what we do. At the end of the POC, uh, you get a, uh, a document as well with an end of uh, POC, um, an overview of what we've seen, uh, what we recommend you do, and what the next steps are. So there we go. So I'll hand it back over to uh, to Ryan. And uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or email them to me afterwards. Cool. Thank you very much, Sylvester. Uh, so some of you have uh, I've heard this already. Some of you haven't. So we'll just do a recap on this. So we've had a recent uh, event with uh, an African financial institution, one of our customers at the back end of 2019. So they actually, we spotted an attack before it became a massive problem and it was ousted before it did cause any havoc, which is fantastic. But what would happen, what happened was there was a uh, something malicious had got into the network and it was trying to exfiltrate data out of the network and return to the command and control center, wherever that may be. But at the time, they were trying to find the best route out of the network without being detected. And one of the methods they were trying or frequently using was monetary value transactions to a bank, uh, a bank account or a, a bank in Eastern Europe, and I believe it's Bulgaria. Uh, and what they were doing was sending very minute amount of money insignificant amount of money but they were doing it rather frequently now initially transaction between one bank and another regardless of where it is in the world 
isn't necessarily a suspicious thing. I mean, it wouldn't really raise a flag. But what did what did raise suspicion with Barack was the fact that the 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 data packets that were being sent per transaction was abnormally large. So again, that's still not something substantial enough to raise a flag, but it's certainly enough to raise suspicion with the ETB platform. So that was one sort of thing. And it was happening quite often. It was, it, it was just a bit strange. Now, when it came to the analysis of the certificate itself, now, Sylvester mentioned the DNS scoring from earlier. The DNS scoring actually picked up that the, um, it was, the certificate was registered to Barclay instead of Barclays. Absolute first red flag straight away. But, in, uh, but data correlation, uh, building a further story is all about um, putting it all together. So on that, the second part, the second flag that was raised then was uh, the certificate itself being signed off in North Korea. Yes, that was the absolute, here's the red flag, here's the top notch scoring, we need to do something about it. And it was alerted in real time to their security team, their IT infrastructure and uh, via SIEM as well. They did a full security audit internally and found it was one device in the whole organization that had infected uh, the network and was doing this exfiltration. So, but Barrack spotted it, Barrack spotted it in real time. It used data correlation to build together the story and find out exactly what was going on. So that was something that was a, a major problem that was well averted and uh, spotted just in time as well. So great, uh, great, great stuff for us. We have the link at the bottom right if you want to read the full article from Computer Weekly. We also have some documentation I can send over to you a bit later if required as well. And uh, we've had third party analysts uh, have come in to do independent reviews of this, uh, just test us uh, for what we claim, and they've come back with some glowing reviews. And again, we've got links for these as well if you want to have a look in more detail what they think of us. We also have an independent review from the Tech Writers Bureau CEO. And I've got documentation on that. Again, another fantastic growing re reference that we'll be pleased to share with you as well. But the common words that we, we have cropping up, affordability, accuracy, lightweight, and privacy. And EMA themselves went as far as saying that back ETV is an ideal co uh, consideration for protecting organizations' data. So again, we can make sure we can get all this information out to you to help support with your pitches and to push it up to your customers as well, get you all comfortable talking about it. Which actually leads me quite nicely to the partner support. So from, from us as a, at vendor level, what kind of support, what kind of stuff you going, can you expect from us and how are we going to help you to push those sales and to get it integrated into your managed service packages or as part of your portfolio? Well. First of all, why should you partner with Barrack in the first instance? Well, as we've covered uh, quite a few times now, <laughs> um, the fact that we have a completely unique solution. We're the only vendor agnostic solution to use the methodology that we do by analyzing the metadata and doing it in real time and doing it with such high accuracy. And do that as well with no decryption whatsoever. So we do have a great solution for you to start pitching. Um, we're getting noticed in a growing market. Now, yes, encryption, well, as we mentioned earlier, is on the rise. Everybody's using it. There is now a necessity to, to inspect encrypted traffic for some uh, for, for malicious attacks or any suspicious behavior. And it's got to sea level within end user organizations that are now talking about the need to, to do something about it. So it is getting noticed in a growing market. Uh, and as, as we mentioned as well earlier, we do have worldwide coverage in London, Boston, Paris and Tunis. We have available to you technical expertise, Sylvester being Exhibit A, and sales expertise with me and Peter, for example. We've got people from both ends of the scale that can help you uh, with whatever question or query or support you want with your end users as well. So how can we help you? Well, to start off with, uh, we can arrange one-to-one -one webinars. So just let us know what kind of content, what kind of information that you want to achieve from one of our webinars. We can do this uh, for, your, uh, for your guys internally uh, as, a, as, a, as an update. We can do a collaboration with you to your end user and we'll do our bit and then leave you to obviously the introductions and the pricing behind the scenes. We can just let us know what you want from us and we'll tailor a webinar to suit your needs definitely and your audience of course. So POCs, NFR licensing, uh, as well as obviously giving them to you and uh, letting you test them and run them for your own infrastructure, we will also help you deploy them as well. 
uh, Sylvester has already gone through this. We will need an initial scoping call just to understand the infrastructure. We will then remotely assist with you so you can see what we're doing and learn how we go about installing it. And we'll, furthermore, we'll make sure that we have regular follow-up calls with you to make sure you get the most from your testing. Uh, and if you've got any questions and queries on that, we make sure we are uh, readily available to pick up uh, pick up whatever you need to as well. Uh, just before the next point, I've clicked a little bit early. Uh, any purchase licensing uh, thereafter from POCs, we can deploy them for you at a cost. Uh, so just speak to me or Peter and we can get some figures over to you if that's what you want to do. Um, the other point there is we will provide sales and technical training. So we can do this either remotely, uh, as I say, by the webinar or on site. Uh, sales wise, if it is an on site uh, training session with your guys, we can split it up into two sessions. So we've got people always on the, on the sales floor uh, or do a lunch and learn, whatever you fancy. Uh, and if it was, you know, I will come down or up wherever you're based and I can do call out days with your staff as well. So we can make sure that everybody's fully comfortable talking about this and positioning it out to customers as well. A uh, couple more things. So yes, marketing documentation and videos. Uh, we have had recordings of our previous webinars available on YouTube. So they are out there. You can check us out on LinkedIn as well. There are some links to it as well, but I can send them out to you uh, so you can share them. Marketing documentation, we've got some fantastic documents on the TLS uh, 1.3 side of things. Uh, the recent uh, National Security Agency in the US warning against the uh, uh, potential issues with decryption. We've got all of them. And if you want to rebrand them, uh, take the contents and rebrand them as yourselves and put that as part of your MSP offering, uh, then you are more than welcome to do so. That's not a problem. Just contact me and Peter to, to, to smooth those over. Now, we also, also have a deal registration process, and uh, so long as it meets the minimum requirements, the minimum 200 IP addresses, then any order thereafter is eligible for registration. It's to make sure that you secure your opportunity and you become the incumbent reseller. And again, if you want information as to how to do that with us, then contact me and Peter and we'll, get, we'll, we'll guide you through that. Um, and we'll support you at our networking events or your networking events. So are you hosting any lunch and learns for your end users? Uh, are you going to any, uh, are you hosting any uh, networking events yourselves or are you attending things like IP Expo, things of that nature? We can send somebody with you, sales or technical or both. We can have presence available for you and we can assist you on stands. We can run some presentations for you and we'll see if we can get some, uh, get some bums on seats for you on the stand as well in lead generation. So let us know. We want to be as flexible as possible for you guys and as, hope and as helpful as possible to you as well. So who are you going to call? Well, not the Ghostbusters. I suppose you could call us the Meta Detectives based on our last webinar. So my details are there. As, I said, as Peter mentioned, I'm the uh, Business Development Manager. Any sales related questions, uh, requests for webinars, trial licensing, NFR uh, quotations, let me know. Those are my details. And Sylvester's details are underneath as well. Again, for any technical support, questions about the, the, the brand new GUI that we're all excited about uh, or any uh, of your deployments or anything like that, just give us a call and we'll send the, these details out afterwards as well. So now we have, uh, I've gone through everything. This is now the big one for you. And I'm absolutely delighted to be able to introduce our partner competition for 2020. So again, thank you very much everybody for attending. Uh, and uh, so let's get on to what you guys can win. So we are running a competition in Q1 and Q2, both of which are separate. And you have the chance to win multiple prizes. So if you win in Q1, it, after the Q1, it will reset and the competition will reopen for everyone again. So you have a chance to win multiple prizes. Um, so one partner can win more than one prize. Uh, and to be eligible to win the prize, you must have uh, a deal set with us net two barrack of worth 250,000 pounds as the T's and C's at the bottom there for you. Now there are first, second and third prices. Um, so let's do it in reverse order to build up the tension. If you are third in netting 250K net to barrack, we will give you vouchers of your choice to the value of 1,000 pounds. Fantastic start, but with this is only the start guys. So if you come second, in being able to net that 250k for us, then we will not only double that, we will double it and add 500 quid. So 2,500 pounds worth of vouchers of your choice if you come second. Now, here's the big one. This is the one we're really excited about, and I hope you guys will be too. So if you are first to net 250k, 
you will win a five night stay with two economy flights to a destination of your choice, completely your choice. I mean, it could be Sydney, Rome, Boston, San Francisco, just to name some places off the top of our heads, but it's entirely up to you where you go. And as I say, you are eligible to win more than one prize. And at the end of Q1, the whole competition resets and we open it up for everybody again in Q2. So you, the, the, the chance to win prizes is phenomenal and the, great, and the prizes are fantastic as well. So we, we, we pulled the stops out for you. Um, and that is me. I shall hand back to Peter to, to, and uh, Sylvester to take some questions, if any guys have uh, any. Great. Thanks, Ryan. And uh, by the way, there's no truth in the rumour that uh, Sylvester will be the, your partner on, on the uh, trip around the world. You can choose somebody else. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, it's, me. it's actually me, to be fair. <laughs> so um, I'd like to thank you all for attending the presentation. I hope you found it useful. Um, you probably have a lot of questions, either commercial questions, marketing, uh, training, uh, POCs. Uh, the best way to get answers is please either uh, send me an email requesting a phone call or if you want a technical presentation or um, a sales presentation, we can schedule a web uh, meeting with you as well. Um, ideally, what would be good would be to find a potential customer who is a friendly account of yours and start a POC in a real life environment. Um, every POC that we've done, we've always found an attack at least one attack with our many attacks and that really helps to sell Barack to your customers. Um, so with that, I'll pass over to Sylvester in case he wants to finish off with any uh, technical pointers. Sylvester? Uh, at the moment, I'm looking at questions. There's one question, which of course is a salesy one because technically I'm uh, uh, probably quick enough. Uh, yes, the licensing. Can you one more time explain how the licensing works, Peter? Yeah, we've tried to keep licensing very, very simple. We've uh, bundled everything into um, the license, which includes uh, support, uh, uh, as many servers as you need, as many collectors as you need, uh, upgrading software, and we charge per internal IP address per year. Um, the customer has an option of a one, two or three year term and obviously the more IP addresses and the longer the term the lower the IP price um, is. In terms of uh, MSSPs, I know we have some MSSPs on the call, um, everything goes into a, 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 if you like a, 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 a bucket so if you have one customer that has 2,000, another customer has 1,000, another one has 200 IP addresses, it all bundles in and that helps you go up the scale to get a reduced price. Perfect, perfect. All right, there's one slightly technical question. Uh, how much traffic does it actually take on top of the normal traffic? That's a good question. So because we don't sit in line, it's slightly more technical. Because we take a tap uh, from the network, some people just use this pass through and you, you bring extra traffic to the network and that sort of thing. We don't. What we do, we, we strip all the data, we take uh, the, the only the metadata and send that back to the ETV pl platform. So if we are using uh, the cloud uh, environment, for instance, then it will only be one to 3% of the actual network traffic, which is on top of the normal traffic. If you have the in-house proof, uh, the in-house ETV solution, then it of course stays in-house and we don't send anything out. It's just a matter of uh, updating the ETV platform once in a while. Uh, and we can do that even offline. It doesn't even have to be connected to uh, the, uh, the internet. So it could be an all on-premise solution. Let's have a look. Is there anybody else? Uh, somebody from South Africa says hi. Hi. Um, no, that's it, Peter. I think that we're uh, that we're there for today. Great. With that, uh, I'll close the uh, the meeting, and we look forward to hearing from all of you and working with you to uh, grow revenues. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, have a good uh, rest of the day. Thank you. Bye bye.